What's up, fellow nerds, and welcome to Not Your Status Quo's Doom Patrol Season 2 Extended Trailer Breakdown. And remember, if you like what we do here, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel. And you know what? Share this with all your friends. They love Doom Patrol, and they call it Baby Doll from the Underground to ring that bell to be notified of all of our future videos. This trailer opens with a shot of the mansion, and then we see Cyborg with someone, I'm not sure who it is, but she gives the Cyborg catchphrase from Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. Booyah! Booyah! And then we see a roller derby, and I'm guessing this is later in the season because Cyborg does seem to be full-sized right here. And this jumps in, we then see Crazy Jane and Robot Man shrunken down, like we saw them at the end of season one in front of a brick for Danny Brick Company. And this is, you know, Danny Street, who we saw at the end of season one was, went from a street to a brick. So that's a nice little nod to season one right there. We then see Negative Man, the only normal size at the end of season one, standing over Cyborg, Robot Man, and Elastigirl. We see Robot Man throwing a rat as he's mini miniature size, which CGI looked pretty good on that. I don't know what you guys thought. I think everything about this trailer looks amazing. <laughs> it, it looks hilarious. Like I, I'm digging like all these uh, very kind of kind of like comic booky sort of uh, uh, images going on and everything. It's it looks fun. It look just it just looks fun. And then we see Crazy Jane and Robot Man, and uh, Crazy Jane it looks like she's smoking a joint and asking Robot Man, "Do you want to?" When talking about, uh, I believe, getting big. And then we see Doom Patrol running with the chief saying, we need to get them big to Willoughby Kipling, who, if you remember from season one, he's kind of a John Constantine type character. And he responds with, that kind of magic doesn't come for free. And it's good to see Willoughby back for this season. Hopefully he'll be in more than one episode like he was last year. We then see some purple magic with Crazy Jane, Elastigirl, and Robot Man. And once again, this looks like they're already normal size. So I definitely think it's sometime in the future, not in the future, but you know, down the line in the show. I don't know how long they're going to be tiny in this season. It's probably maybe only one or two episodes. I can't imagine them being able to do it for much longer, but it could be interesting. I trust them. And then we see the Niles is dying montage and we see him at a circus, which looks like it may be the same scene uh, later in the trailer when we see one of Dorothy's imaginary friends at the circus attacking someone. Did you guys notice that anytime there's like a movie or TV show where they're trying to imply that somebody is dying, they always have to either cough up blood or blood has to come out of their nose? Like, is that the only trope that they, they have to, to use? I do believe it is not only the only one, but the best one. And also the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's no middle ground with you, is there, man? <laughs> <laughs> Never. And then they're asking, you know, how old? He says, I'm 139 years old. And Elastigirl, 139? He's practically dead. And then we hear, you know, the wonderful... I love Robot Man's, like, just his expression, just like... <laughs> Here come the waterworks. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Fraser just nails that line. It's so well done. He does. And then we get the first shot of uh, Dorothy Spinner, who, for those of you who don't know who Dorothy Spinner are, Spinner is, you know, she was in the comics and she suffered a facial deformity that gave her the appearance of an ape, complete with like hairy arms and everything. And because of this, Dorothy grew up completely isolated from society with only her imaginary friends for company. She eventually found out that she could bring these imaginary friends to life. And they taught her how to read and write and do all this stuff. And uh, we do see a few of them in this trailer later on. And then we hear a man, if the chief croaks, someone will have to take care of her. And we see some uh, robot man and he's like, is she really that dangerous? And then we see a giant spider kicks him and warning, possible trailer trick here. We see him, you know, the scene where he's being kicked is dark and it looks you know, like a fairground. And then we see him flying through a sign and it's very lit out with a lot of grass. So maybe he gets kicked out of a building, but then we see him kind of laying face down in the ground. In a crater that's the size of himself. <laughs> it's like a chalk outline around him. That's what I said. Like everything in this trailer just, it, it screams like comic book cartoon. It's, it, it's hilarious. I'm loving it. 
they definitely stick, you know, with the uh, the comic books in the way it is. It's always, you know, extremely wacky and strange and weird, and they've totally nailed the theme in this show. And then we see Dorothy hiding under a bed, and we see her blow something out. And then we see one of her imaginary friends, Candleman, uh, with the chief, and it looks like he may be about to attack him. I don't know if she's upset with the chief for some reason, and Candleman is going after him. Then we see a couple other, you know, we see another imaginary friend, attacking people at the circus, which may be the same one where we get that chief is dying trope and him coughing blood into a handkerchief. Then we see Elastigirl saying the only thing keeping Dorothy from going full wild child is them, referring to Doom Patrol. And then we see Crazy Jane throwing her in a furnace, closing the door. And then we hear robots saying, no way, it's every man, woman, and brick for themselves. Definitely referring to Danny Brick since he was, you know, went from a street to a brick at the end of season one. It's nice they're not, you know, they're still referring to season one and things that happen in season one are definitely going to play a role in season two. And then we get Elastigirl saying to Chief, you know, time is what you need. How do we get more? And then we see some more purple magic and we see a roller disco. And I was kind of looking around for any kind of sort of like roller disco from Doom Patrol comics or really DC in general. I really couldn't find anything. So if you guys out there watching have any ideas what that might be related to, please let us know in the comments. We're definitely interested. I'm so sure we'll I know this isn't a, a theory palooza, but I was thinking about that. Uh, based on some of the imagery that we've got from the posters and later on in the trailer, uh, which you'll get to, um, it seems almost like they, they are maybe perhaps being transported into um, like a, a fantasy world or something like that. Like the way they're looking around, if uh, you look at that part in the scene where they're at the roller derby, they almost seem surprised that they're there at first. Like, how did we get here? And then later on, it almost looks like they're not on Earth or they're somewhere else. Oh, and uh, the, the posters imply that, you know, like one of them shows a yellow brick road. And the other one uh, shows Alice in Wonderland. So I don't know if they're being put into some sort of like fantasy land that's being created or something. It could definitely be someone using their power to kind of transport them to some place or it's just all in their head at the time. Uh, then we see Cyborg saying to Elastigirl, so you want to be a superhero? And her working on stretching her arm and Elastigirl, is it wrong to desire mastery over one's limbs? And then you see as she's reaching to try to either hit the dummies or grab them, the arm just kind of floats to the ground and she's like, oh, God damn it. And just so you know, this is not a kid's superhero show. There is lots of swearing. Then we go to a scene and we see Robot Man and Chief opening a garage. And then we hear Crazy Jane telling Robot Man, I need Chief, with him saying, why do you need him? And then we see the underground with Baby Doll running and more, you know, a lot of other characters from her underground. While Crazy Jane explains, shit, shit is getting weird in the underground. And I don't know how much longer I have before the rest of me has their way which could definitely be an interesting uh, story that we're going to see play out in season two. For those of you who don't know, Crazy Jane's has a bunch of personalities in her, and the Chief has helped her kind of just stay as Jane and keep all of the other... You know, people, all the Yeah, mm -hmm. suppressed. So we definitely could see her losing control a little bit, which could be one of the main themes of this season. As we know, Dorothy... They've already talked about in this trailer, you know, they, without Doom Patrol, the chief, they can't really see her in check. And then we see Chief and Elastigirl opening a door and we see a bunch of butterflies. And this is most likely a reference to the villain we see a little bit later in this trailer, Red Jack. In the comics, the Doom Patrol fought him, but they couldn't overpower him until Crazy Jane released his collection of pinned butterflies. And he used them and their pain to stay focused. And with them gone, it kind of sidetracked him or you know got him you know distracted him enough so that doom patrol could definitely beat him in the comics and i don't know if this is shown for the people who know the comics as kind of a once again a trailer trick like we think that's how they're going to beat him this time and they may not even be fighting him but it was nice seeing all those butterflies looking like they were freed and then we hear the chief say oh well, we have a dinner party with the lovely red jack you want to know who Red Jack is? We just kind of talked about him. He is a near omnipotent being who thinks he is not only Jack the Ripper, but he also thinks he's God. And he lives in a house without windows and he tortures butterflies to create the pain he needs to survive. And we see him going the mountain, that's a Game of Thrones reference, on one of his dinner guests. 
you know, pushing his thumbs through his eyes. And then we see him putting a knife into the chief's hand. So it definitely looks like uh, they're getting this character right for season two of uh, Doom Patrol. And then we see Dorothy opening the front door and we see a huge collection of people, some from season one, and Doom Patrol is having a party. And that's when the sex men show up. And for those of you who want to know who the sex men are, if you haven't read the comics, they are an odd, goofy team of square-jawed, two-fisted soldiers who deal with paranormal sexual situations. It's like G.I. Joe, only not really. And they carry advanced equipment. They are superhuman. And the weird thing is, like, if one of them gets beheaded, the head is still fully aware, can even talk, and presumably probably be attached later. I don't think they ever showed that. And they briefly appeared in 1991 in issues of Grant Morrison's run, wonderful run on Doom Patrol series. And then it ends with Crazy Jane saying, I have so many questions. I also have so many questions. Like, well, like why all the sex men aren't men? How much cocaine did they do? <laughs> Probably quite a bit. And, you know, I think that's, hopefully we answered some of your questions, like maybe who Red Jack was and things, but there are so many that have come up, you know, because of this trailer. And it's looking, you know, we don't have much longer till season two, drops on HBO Max and DC Universe, but definitely looking forward to it. And I think, you know, with Willoughby Kipling showing up again, Red Jack and the Sex Men, and they are all from Grant Morrison's run on Doom Patrol. I think his run is gonna be a major influence on season two and if you need some reading material prior to the season starting i think his run is a great place to start this looks, looks just like every um every time i've seen this trailer i just i i look forward more to it it's just like to me brandon brendan frazier steals every scene he's hilarious but everything i've seen in there is just funny except for uh, of course the dying of uh, i'm gonna use his real name uh timothy Dalton. That's his name. Timothy Dalton. That's Chief. Yes. Yes. And I don't think he'll really die. I think they'll find a way to save him because, you know, I mean, he's 139. He basically formed the Doom Patrol to help with Dorothy, to help her by understanding other people's powers and basically to prolong his own life. So I got a feeling, unless his contract's over and he's not coming back for season three, that they're going to save him somehow. And they're just kind of putting that out there to, you know, to move the story along. And if we missed anything, you guys, let us know down in the comments. Are you guys looking forward to Doom, Doom Patrol season two as much as we are? We definitely love season one and can't wait for season two to drop.